I think it's difficult, even while you're still at an event such as this uh, forum, the fourth World Forum on Intercultural Dialogue, to say it was a success or a failure, because success or failure are on what happens after. The process in terms of success and failure of the event, events highly attended, people came, gave good speeches, and many bilateral meetings. So in that aspect, of course, you can say that that is a success. But any conference builds a process that starts with that conference and then moves forward. We have all come here and learned new things. I mean, you had the government of Azerbaijan, you had other governments, other ministries uh, uh, and representatives coming here. You had high level representation from the United Nations, the Director General of UNESCO, the High Representative for the Alliance of Civilizations, the, from the Council of Europe, from the F Food and Agriculture Organization, uh, as well as other uh, partners within the uh, UN system that are represented at different levels. The discussions that I have seen bring back the importance of dialogue and using culture as a way to connect people and to connect societies, and sometimes even within the same country, how culture brings us together as humans. We have differences in the way we see things, but there are also sometimes things that can bring us together. Culture, art are an important element of that. Humanities and humans and different people also define themselves sometimes along cultural terms. And when they start looking at the cultures of other people, it creates a kind of, brings the similarities. Yes, there are differences, but there are also similarities. And the involvement, of course, the World Tourism Organization is the other presented by the Secretary General at the high level. So the connection between tourism and culture is also important. And I think it was brought in one of the statements is that tourism today is one of the highest contributor to many countries' economies, actually global economy. And you can say uh, it is probably one of the top employers around the world. Now, tourism depends on stability. Nobody wants to go to a region in conflict, unless you're a war reporter. But so tourism has a vested interest in peace and promoting peace and having uh, people come to enjoy what countries, different countries offer. So tourism is also raises the, elevates the investment in, in cultural items and cultural issues, whether historical or traditional or music or food and so on. So uh, it's timely, the conference is timely because I think as the Secretary General Antonio Guterres highlighted the uh, message of peace at the beginning of the year, spoke about the importance of prevention. And prevention can also start with dialogue and intercultural dialogue. So I, I think I'm optimistic moving forward. And as you've said, the work just is beginning or it continues. So what the UN is planning to do and is doing already in moving forward this agenda mm -hmm. of tolerance, peace and dialogue? I mean, this is the raison d'etre of what the UN is about. I mean, at the Department of Public Information, what our job is, of course, we inform, engage, act, is, is some of the things that we as a department define our mission statement. We try to ensure that what happens inside the United Nations is communicated in an impartial, speedy way in multiple languages to the world outside. We are a publicly funded organization by taxpayers' money from member states, so it's important also that we are efficient, effective in the delivery of the services that we do. The values and objectives of the organization as defined by member states are about building peace, justice, stability, and then sustainable development and human rights. So how do we go around that? We recognize that the world is complex. The UN is a complex organization. It's not easy always to explain how it works and why certain things are done this way or that way. But the basis of it is that we should try to resolve when there is a conflict through dialogue and peaceful means and based on principles. 
And the basic principles are defined in the Charter of the United Nations or through United Nations resolutions, whether it's the General Assembly resolutions, Security Council resolutions, Human Rights Council. And that's part of a long process. So we are, I don't think I'm under any illusion that we can find a magic solution for any problem overnight. And these things take time. People are influenced through different ways. And one of the panels I was on yesterday, for example, was about the impact of uh, today technologies and social networks and the internet. And what we see today, I mean, I grew up, we didn't even, television came later. We found things out through television programs that started at 6 p.m., ended at 10 p.m., uh, radio and newspapers. Today, of course, young people, my children included, they, they hardly watch television. I never see them read a newspaper or listen to radio, yet they are informed. And they uh, get that information directly through social media, the internet, and the same thing is for young people around the world. I think I would be fooling myself, and I think part of the, uh, to assume that I know everything that they have access to, and this is part of the reality. The world of the internet today and what social media has offered is changing the way that we communicate. And as a department, I think we are now recognizing and making sure that to be able to deliver the products that we are producing, the, to be able to be relevant in the world of communication, this is where, where we need to invest in putting our resources as a department for the UN in public information. We did a small survey uh, asking young people, where do you get your news? Actually, not only young people responded, but the majority were young people. And almost 90% of respondents said that they get, the primary source of their news was social media, 59%, websites, 29%. And then the remaining 10% were divided between uh, television, radio, and newspapers, or through friends. Um, that tells us a lot. I mean, it is of course important to continue producing news through the audiovisual and written text, but how we distribute it, we need to look at the different platforms. An important element of also for us as a department, I think, is multilingualism. Because not everybody necessarily speaks English or French, or, and the sixth official languages of the UN uh, is, is an important part of what we work with, but also it's important where we have UN information centers, they make the information available in local languages, and that is another element that, uh, that we, we need to look more into, how to create partnerships with universities, partnerships with other entities that can facilitate the provision and sharing of the information that we produce in multiple languages. The unlearning intolerance, going back to the theme of this conference. I think at least the panel I was in uh, on um, intercultural dialogue, building bridges as a means, as one tool to counter violent extremism. When we look at uh, media today and coverage, uh, we see a lot of news about uh, violent extremists and terrorist attacks and so on and so forth. And in actual fact, according to my colleague from the UNDP, uh, his uh, statement yesterday that in 2016, there was actually a reduction in the total number of victims of terrorist attacks compared to 2015. I think one victim is too much. But how do you reach a situation where you can actually eliminate that? I think the UN, the plan of action that was submitted to the General Assembly in terms of preventing violent extremism provides the analysis, the context of the situation, identifies the situations where violent extremists can actually exploit and, and, and find recruits and be able to move action in that way. It also proposes a series of actions that have to be developed into national, regional, and global plans that include uh, important of inclusion, 
importance of dialogue, importance of avoiding marginalization, but also emphasizes good governance, rule of law, respect for human rights, and empowerment of women and girls and youth, uh, important issues of employment and, and, and so on and so forth. So it's, it's a multiplicity of issues. But as a department of public information, uh, what we try to do is work with civil society, academic institutions on programs that address uh, prejudice, uh, unlearning intolerance series, discussions on how we can uh, unlearn intolerance. I mean, um, it's a sort of a, an oxymoron, but uh, uh, I think humans are not born with any prejudice. Prejudices are things that people sort of absorb from as they grow up, whether through the environment at home or at school or through their peers. And today with the internet, that environment that can influence them is much larger than, than anybody had ever thought of. The, uh, another campaign that uh, we are working with is Together, Respect, Safety and Dignity for All. It's a campaign that aims to give an opportunity for people to recognize that migrants and refugees are people in need, are people who are just like us, who for conditions beyond their control have had to leave their home and become either internally displaced or a refugee or needed to leave to look for a better life for their family and that they are not a threat. One has to recognize the contribution that many migrants and refugees have actually uh, given and, and inputted into the countries that have hosted them. So these are some of the things that we try to do that are relevant to the work of this forum.